Hey everybody, welcome, it's Caleb. And in this video, I'm going to advertise my course. I, I mean, I am going to talk about three misconceptions around data structures and algorithms. And I will have a link to the upcoming course if it's something you're interested in. So when it comes to being an effective software engineer, there's two major things I think people need to know how to do. First is they need to be a competent developer. And then second, they need to understand how to get through technical interviews with data structures and algorithms and system design. And there's all kinds of other little things in there. You know, you should be good at communicating good at interviewing, and be a value add to any company that hires you. I've already created a lot of content and courses on fundamental software engineering skills, so now I'm talking about data structures and algorithms. And I would say the first common misconception is that data structures and algorithms are only useful for getting through technical interviews, and beyond that, they're pretty much useless. I think this is completely false, and I believe it is easy to fall into that trap where you think it's useless, so you're not putting in the effort to learn it, and that later provides prevents you from being successful in some other areas. While I do believe data structures and algorithms is critical for technical interviews and knowing DSA will help you with technical interviews, I do not believe that is the only application of DSA. And yes, I do believe that many apps day to day are just CRUD apps that don't need advanced data structures and algorithms. And many of the programming languages have built in functions and capabilities where you don't have to know the inner workings and be able to write a sort or a search from scratch. That's totally true, but I still believe knowing data structures and algorithms is going to help you write better code. And I believe it's going to help you write new types of software that you may not have been able to do before because you didn't have the skill needed to be able to build it. There definitely are certain types of applications that utilize data structures and algorithms. And knowing those skills is going to place you in a category of developers that are more capable and able to work on more challenging applications. Simple example, you might be working on some application that uses maps or routing and having a stronger understanding of graph theory and traversing data is going to help you a lot in that type of role. So if you buy too much into the mindset of, oh, you don't need these skills, then you're just setting an artificial cap on your capabilities and you're going to prevent yourself from going deeper in code and different types of applications. I truly believe that and I fell for a similar trap back when I was in like middle school or high school and everybody around me was kind of a downer. They're like, oh, the stuff we're learning is pretty much useless. You're not going to use this in the real world, especially when it came to math. But I bought into that mindset where this math stuff isn't going to be super useful for me. So then later on, when I was learning linear algebra for computer science, which has a ton of use cases, I had a hard time picking that up because I was severely lacking on the fundamental math skills that I should have brought into that linear algebra. And even now I feel like I'm missing out on potential things I could do if I was stronger in those skills. So I have said on this channel, you know, I don't really consider myself a math person, but anytime I have learned math, it has always helped me in computer science. Do you need math to be a software developer? No. And many people can become a software developer, never have to use math in their applications, especially if they're just building websites or backends and APIs where they're not doing any computation. Just like with data structures and algorithms, not knowing that stuff limits you in what you can build. And I just believe that is a fact. So I started off in development, then I ended up going back to school because I wanted to have that stronger core foundation. And we had a data structures and algorithms class there. I felt it was too mathy, a little too academic. We're gonna talk about that. Going through that class definitely helped me get the foundation but I didn't really learn data structures and algorithms until many years later when I picked that topic up on my own and decided to become very good at this topic. After I did that, I would look back at old code of mine and be like, man, what are you doing? This approach is terrible. You're doing something that's relatively stupid when it comes to an efficiency point of view. And even with a small amount of data or smaller applications, inefficiencies can cause problems. That was a misbelief I had as well with data structures and algorithms. I was like, it doesn't really matter unless you're working with tons and tons of data. Even with a medium or relatively small set of data, choosing the correct algorithm can make a huge difference in the performance of the software and can determine if you're even able to solve whatever problem you're given. I just didn't realize how important it was at the time because I was still very early on in my software development journey. So I didn't reach to the point of having situations and applications where I needed those skills yet. I'm kind of rambling, but the point is don't fall into the mindset of like, oh, you just need this for 
data structures and algorithms interview problems, because if you learn these skills, you're going to be a much better developer, both in writing regular code better and writing new types of software and new approaches to problems that go beyond your current set of skills. And the third major benefit is that it's going to help you with technical interviews. So there's no major downside besides the pain and time it takes to learn data structures and algorithms, which is why I wanted to curate the material in such a way that it's very easy to consume, pick up those core skills such that you can solve a variety of different problems thrown at you. The second major misconception I want to talk about is that data structures and algorithms is really just a memorization game, memorizing some solution to a certain problem. And this can get you some places, right? Like you have these common problems, you get asked for interviews, here are the common solutions. Many people get through interviews that way, but it's not an efficient way of learning because you're basically just memorizing stuff. You're not learning the core skills. You're not able to be given a problem, reason about possible solutions, evaluating why certain ones might be better than others, talking about different trade-offs, and ultimately being able to pick the best solution for the given problem. So for example, if you're just given a DSA problem, maybe it's a leak code problem, yes, you can just solve it, give the answer, yay. But maybe it's a more complex problem and you're just communicating with somebody about it. Well, what type of machine is doing the computation? Is this a machine that is memory constrained or compute constrained? Because there might be different solutions that either use more memory or use more compute. If all you do is memorize solutions, you have a much harder time reasoning about these choices and being able to basically communicate with somebody who does know the correct answer and convince them that you know what you were talking about and that you could make a good choice. There are certain things you will benefit from memorizing, but what I would say is most valuable is understanding the core data structures, the core algorithms, how they work and why they work, and when you should apply which, what operations might be useful in certain situations so that you can take any problem and come up with a solution. Another common bad approach is trying to learn everything. Let's go through and learn all of the sorting algorithms, all of the searching algorithms. This isn't a great approach either because if you understand those core principles of data structures and algorithms, you will have the skills to pick up any of those algorithms or any new data structures. And learning the ins and outs of every possible scenario is very time inefficient and doesn't take advantage of those core skills. And then a third common problem with approach is focusing too much on a certain programming language and not understanding what's happening behind the scenes. So if you're using some data structure, you should understand what happens. If you're using a sort algorithm, you should understand what happens. And when you're solving a data structures and algorithms problem, don't be so tied to one programming language over the other. Think of the logic. You should be able to write the solution in pseudocode. And this is probably why whiteboarding interviews became so popular. It's because you want to be able to think through the solution and not be tied to one specific programming language. For me, I personally like learning data structures and algorithms with Python. I think it reduces friction the most so you can focus on whatever data structure or algorithm you're trying to learn. And then once you understand those underlying data structures and algorithms, you can convert that to any programming language. But I can speak from experience because I was trying some DSA problems with Rust compared to Python. Getting to the solution with Rust took four times as long. And the only thing that was doing for me was slowing down my progression of becoming better at data structures and algorithms, which was the main goal. So once I'm good at data structures and algorithms, then I can apply that skill to any programming language. And then the last misconception is that data structures and algorithms is too mathy or too academic. And if you're not into that, then you really shouldn't waste your time learning them. Well, I think that is just a bad approach of teaching for many courses and resources. Really, you should be learning data structures and algorithms in a way that is applied for software developers. What do we actually care about? Then you can spend some time to learn the math or some of the algorithm analysis, but you shouldn't be focusing on that first. <laughs> the goal is to learn data structures and algorithms from a practical perspective. Once you understand how things work and you can reason about the different runtime complexities, evaluating an algorithm or some operations with a data structure becomes much easier because you know how things work at the core level. So if you're having a hard time picking up data structures and algorithms, and it always comes down to there being too much math or too many theorems or proofs or whatever it may be, then you're probably learning it in the wrong approach and you need to shift to practical data structures and algorithms. Once you understand the practicality, understanding the math, on top of that is not going to be nearly as hard. So if you're given a leak code problem, you should be able to solve it 
but then you should be able to evaluate it for its time complexity and its space complexity. Talk about potential different solutions that might have slightly different time complexities and why you chose the solution that you chose. When you're getting started, that's pretty much all the math you're going to need. So if you're doing much more than that, you're getting into more academic and formal data structures and algorithms, which is one of the reasons why I'm hesitant to suggest people learning from most textbooks, is you're given a book this thick of information, but the practical stuff that you need to get the most progress is maybe this much of that thick book. So why not just focus on that first? And then when you need the math, you can layer that on top much easier because you understand how the algorithms work. That's my approach to learning and that's what I do for the course. So to wrap this up, those are my three major misconceptions. The first being that DSA is only useful for interviews. The second is the approach, the best way to learn data structures and algorithms is through memorization. I'm not really sure if that's a misconception, but a bad approach. And then the third is that data structures and algorithms is just too mathy or too academic, and it has no real practical value. Well, I think I've debunked all of those pretty well in this video. You know, this isn't some formal argument. So you may have different opinions for parts of that, but this is what has worked for me and has helped me get the most progress with data structures and algorithms, which is a topic when I first learned it, I found to be very difficult. It was the hardest class in computer science and I never super loved the topic, but now I actually find the topic to be quite fun and very useful. So it all comes down to the approach of learning and that's what I believe I do different. So if you are interested in picking up data structures and algorithms from both a concept level and an applied level, then check out my course. I will have a link down below. It's early access this week and then it'll close because I'll be producing the material over the next two months or so, and then it will open up again without the early access bonuses. So if you are watching this after the early access week, just check that link and the course will be open again soon. Thank you so much for watching. Would love to know your opinion. What are your thoughts on data structures and algorithms? How have you made the most progress with this topic? And what things have given you the most difficulties? Since I haven't produced all the material yet, I might take your thoughts and bring that into some of the lessons in the course. Additionally, I will have some data structures and algorithms content coming out on YouTube here. So looking forward to that as well. If you do not end up buying the course, all good. I wanna be able to support everybody here. So we will have free DSA content as well. It's just not gonna be as thorough or as in depth as the dedicated data structures and algorithms course. But it should at least get you started and give you a good approach to data structures and algorithms. So thank you so much. I will see you in the next lesson.